wishing all a very good morning uh, my name is divya sardana from link cxo and i will be your host for today's webinar uh, thank you for all uh, to you for joining for today uh, first of all i would like to extend my deepest gratitude towards our esteemed panel for today ms kalpana choudhury ms ritul shrivastav and ms tanya katpal thank you all for joining us today i will be introducing them shortly also i would like to welcome all our webinar participants today hoping that the next one hour will be an enriching experience for all of you i would like to begin with a small introductory note about our company link cxo link cxo is an exclusive invite based ai enabled cxo engagement and recommendation platform developed by iit and iim graduates it is an intelligent tool to change the way senior leaders collaborate globally the platform aims to offer a holistic experience to all its joinees whether you are a senior c suite executive a budding entrepreneur an investor or a service provider link cxo wishes to ease out your life a bit from providing relevant and latest industry wide reports and articles to offering you a space to connect with top senior leaders across the globe without being overrun by non value adding connections link cxo has got it completely sorted for more details you can visit our website and linkedin page now beginning with the panel discussion i would first like to invite ms kalpana choudhury a social worker by profession and founder of social tables she is also the co chairperson at the cham women entrepreneurs development council she is the managing trustee and chairperson of jan seva foundation ms kalpana has also been a tedx speaker and is an active member at fiki flo and cii iwn maharashtra thank you for joining us today kalpana over to you so much thank you so much for inviting me it's such a honor and pleasure thank you link uh, csco and team uh, so uh, you want me to start yeah sure all right so uh, for those who have just joined uh, the question is how to stay resilient agile and anti fragile in a post covid world well so uh, the times are definitely uncertain and there is indeed a requirement to put short term goal into place the pandemic is an unprecedented time and further unprecedented measures will have to be adopted to overcome it one thing out of many things that this pan pandemic has taught me is the importance of remaining resilient throughout the times whether they are the sweet little joyous times or few times where we are struggling with the emotions ever since the beginning of the covid-19 pandemic people have been feeling very anxious stressed confused worried apprehensive irritated angry sad even a little lost feeling so many min emotions basically i could say it's a mixed emotions which all of us are facing right now and sometimes a multiple of them at one once can take a huge toll on one's mental health the first the very first uh, step in battling as well as surviving in the post covid world will be to take absolute care of your mental health it is said that a healthy mind has a healthy body it's time we apply this in our realities it's quite certain that it's it's quite certain that coming out of a completely different environment that our bodies have adopted ourselves is going to be difficult it will become important to accept our emotions and instead of sending more uh, time thinking about those emotions we will be required to shift to the problem to a solving mode basically instead of wondering what would happen if you tried to make the situation better we must go for it last but not the least finding a purpose will be helping us a lot we all have to find a motive for ourselves and that will ensure keep away from all the negative energies and move towards the positive ones i am sure adopting these measures will definitely be benefit uh, will definitely benefit the mental state of people and i am sure you all will agree that brain is the body body's temple and we will have to keep it fit to keep us fit uh, furthermore the humanity fit as a whole now moving on to the effect of this pandemic in the post covid world 
it is very clear that the loss brought upon the world by the virus in terms of economy will take a long, long time to heal. I read somewhere that everything we do before a pandemic will seem alarmist and everything we do after the pandemic will seem inadequate. I wasn't able to relate to it and that time, but now I feel like how true it is and will always be rather than rely solely upon the ability of system operators to prevent, avoid, withstand and observe any and all threat resilience emphasizes the importance of recovery and adoption in the aftermath of disruption. Such a mindset acknowledges that the infinite variety of future threats cannot be adequate, predicted and measured, nor can that be effect, uh, uh, nor can that effect, uh, effects be fully understood. We must look at in a positive van manner. Resilience acknowledges the mass massive disruption can and will happen in further climate disruption like uh, uh, will likely compound other uh, shocks like pandemics. And it is very essential that core system have the capacity of recovery and adaption to the, ensure their survival. And uh, also take the advantage of the new role or uh, revealed opportunities following the crisis to improve the system through broader systematic change. The COVID pandemic, for example, provides an opportunity to address other emergencies such as climate change more effectively. This is, some, this is sometimes characterized as uh, not just the bouncing back, but bouncing forward. The world post COVID-19 will be the same as it had been before. However, our vision or our, view, our way of looking at the world will definitely change. The most powerful thing we can do to remain resilient, resilient agile and anti-fragile is not let ourselves take over our minds. Thank you so much. Thank you, Kalpana, for such words of wisdom. A quick question to you. Uh, what is the one thing that has made you anti-fragile for the contemporary time? See, now, for example, uh, I... Uh, as you know, I'm a social worker, I'm a TEDx speaker, I have a lot of other social projects to do. I was working for a company for a social project and overnight even I, uh, you know, uh, was lost. I was nowhere in the midst. And uh, that's the moment I decided, okay, I'm not going to sit back. Overnight, I formed social tables. It's three months, uh, three and a half months now and we have already done around 45 shows. So it is, life will bring you challenges. Life is full of challenges and you need to address it. You need to make your choice. You need to make your priority clear. Now, for example, this is the third time I'm fighting cancer. I just, uh, uh, two weeks back, I was in hospital. On the day I discharged, the very next day I had my show. That didn't stop me. So you have to prioritize yourself. You have to in life and you have to be very positive about it. So until and unless you're not very positive and you're not open to it and follow your passion because wo mera passion hai, to shayad mein utke kar liya. And then I had people calling me and telling me, ma'am, my hand uh, got frozen for two days and I couldn't even do anything. And look at you, surgery and the very next day you're doing this show. I said, I mean, it's it's just about the perception. You have to train your mind that way. And that's how I've trained myself. And uh, yeah, no regrets in life. That's great to hear. Uh, thank you, Kalpana, for your yeah. thoughts. Uh, now moving on to our second speaker, Ms. Ritu Srivastava, a health tech entrepreneur and the founder of Obino. She has held pivotal profiles over the last 18 years across the health tech, telecom, media, and IT industries. And her achievements range from building Obino, creating award-winning and multi-million dollar mobile products like Music On Demand for Airtel, being head of pro pro programming and RJ for radio stations like Red FM and Radio 1 FM, and managing a strategic sales portfolio for Wipro Infotech. Thank you for joining us today, Ritu. Over to you. Thank you so much, Divya. It was really kind of you to give me such a nice introduction. Uh, and I'm really happy to be here today. 
it's such a pleasure to be among such uh, luminaries thank you so much kalpana your story is really inspiring i've been reading about you and hats off to you i don't know how you do what you do thank you so i'm glad you do what you do thank you so much thank you and um, i think the topic that the link cxo team has come up with is a really interesting one uh, in the sense that this is the time when we are all talking about being resilient about being you know agile agile being anti fragile i, I find that term uh, really intrinsically has brought fragility to the forefront everything that we took for granted in our lives today we said this is what our life is about has been shattered it's been broken that doesn't exist anymore it's the definition of fragility and to talk about anti fragility at a time like this is very counter intuitive and i'm really glad that the cxo team bought it out um what does anti fragility really mean and i'd like to talk about that for a second today in my mind anti fragility is literally about being the opposite of fragile fragile is when you drop something it breaks when you put pressure on something it collapses anti fragile is when you put pressure on something it becomes stronger anti fragile is when you drop something it bounces higher it's literally the opposite of being fragile and how do you do that in 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 an ecosystem or a situation like the one that surrounds us today uh, it's easier said than done to actually be anti fragile and uh, for me i think it's about three things anti fragile is about thriving in adversity when the situation is bad when the situation is going from bad to worse how do you thrive in it how do you do better than you were doing before and the simple answer to that is in your mindset and that mindset is a mindset of finding opportunity when uh, boats sink some people struggle to stay afloat other people start building a new boat the covid situation today has given us opportunities all of us it has given us opportunities only if we are able to see those opportunities for what they are if we look at them as situations that are going to get us down um, then life is going to be really really hard to survive but if we look at them as options to grow thrive do things that we didn't have the opportunity to do before if we find opportunity in that situation of adversity that's really where we are going to thrive and grow and you know literally take off and i'll i'll give you um, an example because you know it's easy to talk about such things but it's much harder to actually articulate them so there's a there's a company that i work with a startup that i mentor uh, they are into data sciences and their business comes from companies outsourcing data data science projects to their companies and they find data scientists and put them together now this situation the covid 19 situation is one where companies are holding on to their money and they are not spending at a time like this and obviously the business of the startup is deeply impacted because companies are not giving out projects instead of getting down and feeling worried and going into survival mode the company actually took a complete roundabout they actually pulled their resources back in they pulled their money back in and instead of saving money at a time like this they spent all their time automating their entire platform so that when the market opens up they have an ability to scale and grow quickly because they realize that all the companies are holding on to their project budgets when in the first quarter of next year those budgets are released there's going to be a flood of orders in the market but only the companies that are able to scale and grow quickly beyond their service capacities are going to be able to take advantage of this opportunity so instead of going into survival mode if you go into scale mode if you sit back and say what can i do during this period of time that will enable me to ride the wave when it hits next that is where you find opportunity in an adverse situation for myself um you know business is really really slow how have i been spending my time let me let me not talk about other people let me talk about myself 
uh, one of the things that I really enjoy doing is I write a lot. Um, I love to write. I love to share work with startups, but my regular day-to-day -day work, my commute, my travel, it doesn't allow me to do all of this. And that is when I decided to use this particular COVID time to actually work on writing down everything that I've learned during my startup journey, put together a, a series of lessons, learning, so to speak, that I could share with my startups. Uh, I've worked on actively scaling up my mentoring. I work for at least one to two hours every day with my mentor startups. I've now taken much more into active angel investing because of which my personal wealth and portfolio has grown uh, quite extensively during this COVID period. So I think if you look at the benefits of time and energy that this COVID period is giving you as a gift and how you can apply that to the opportunities that are in front of you, that's how you will thrive in an adverse situation. If you allow the situation to weigh on you, on your mind, that's when it's going to drag you down. So the first thing is about finding the opportunity and leveraging it. The second is about preparing for the opportunities that will come after this period. So going out of survival mode and into scale up mode. And the third and most important is about letting go. At this point of time, uh, you know, it's, there's a very famous uh, Hindu saying which says, karm karo, phal ki upeksha mat karo. If you try and control for the outcome today in this uncertain time, that's not going to happen. So all you can do is put in your effort. You can do what you do best. And then you just have to let go and leave it on the universe. That which is meant to come back to you will come back to you. And that which doesn't come back was never meant for you anyway. So I think a key part about reducing your stress, about thriving, is just about doing the best you can do in this situation and then letting go. Let what is meant to happen, happen. It will happen for the good, but sometimes we just have to keep the faith till that happens. So I'll stop there. Back to you, Divya. Thank you so much, Ritu, for such wonderful insights. A quick question to you again. Uh, we see that you're also an angel investor. Uh, so from the perspective of an investor, what do you think is one advice that you would like to give to today's entrepreneurs? Um, I think it's the same advice that I speak about to all of my investee companies and to the companies that I work with and mentor is that this period is an opportunity, but you're not going to be able to find the opportunity if you are coming from a place of insecurity. If you're constantly worried about your job, you're not going to do a great job. If you're constantly worried about survival, you're not going to look at growth. So at some level, entrepreneurs have to dig deep and find that inner strength and say that this is what I signed up for. This uncertainty, these highs and lows, uh, this is life. This is the life of an entrepreneur. I've chosen this life. And now that I'm here, I'm going to stop worrying and I'm going to start thriving. And it's a mindset. If you genuinely believe in yourself, if you believe that you can thrive and find opportunity, then you will go into opportunity seeking mode. You will start looking at every conversation as an opportunity to make a sale, to make a relationship, to network. If you are in stress mode, you will look at every every conversation as a threat, as somebody trying to take something away from you. So it's about the mindset. You have to open up and say, where is the opportunity? What can I do right now that's going to stand me in great stead? And that's how you have to approach this COVID period and how you have to approach life. At least that's what I do. <laughs> Thank you for such wonderful piece of advice, uh, Ritu. I hope that uh, all the entrepreneurs listening to you today will definitely pay heed to it. Um, now moving on to our third and final speaker, Ms. Tanya Katpal, founder of Eat My News. Uh, she hosts various political thought leaders and thinkers interviews on Eat My News YouTube channel in a series called Talk with Tanya. She's a three-time TEDx speaker and has been invited to 50 plus premier institutions like IIMs and IITs across the country as a guest speaker, lecturer, and a panelist. 
Kanya has also delivered multiple training sessions in leading corporate institutions and has created various courses posted on online platforms. Thank you, Tanya, for joining us today. Over Thank to you. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure listening to you, uh, Ritu and Kalpana. Both of you all shared uh, some very interesting and uh, great insights and uh, an absolute delight to be here. Thanks, Divya, for uh, inviting me. Now, the theme of uh, your uh, event today is very interesting because it talks about uh, resilience agility and anti-fragility now uh, i will like to start on a very positive note first in terms of uh, we've all been hearing that how covid is so unprecedented and how it has suddenly sprung up and changed the world as we knew it before however uh, if we look at it very very positively to begin with, there are a lot of great changes that have happened in the world, right? I mean, in the span of uh, the two, three months when we were all locked down, I mean, who could have ever imagined that something like this is going to happen? We saw great things happening, like the earth was healing and everybody was trying to find their passion. And uh, there were a lot of things uh, doing the rounds in terms of how people are doing with the uh, uh, how people are dealing with COVID, mental health suddenly became a topic of discussion. This The world suddenly moved online and started finding uh, validity in the fact that how uh, meetings can also be done on Zoom or on other platforms, which were very unimaginable before, because earlier the world was all about uh, physical interactions. So suddenly we I, if I could put it in a way, I'd say from outwards, we moved a lot more inwards. So a lot of positive things happened like that. So I think COVID's not been uh, all that bad. And why I say that is because I know there are a lot of uh, repercussions that the economy or the businesses across the world have uh, been facing. But I feel this was sort of like a wake up call to everybody to mend their ways in a way that so that we are more futuristic and ready. I always feel that change can never be smooth. If we feel uh, that transitioning is easy, whoever is uh, here today, think about the time whenever you had to go through some kind of a change in your life, be it a change in job or, you know, moving into doing your own startup or even as kids changing schools all sorts of change would bring some kind of a mental pressure and uh, would make people uncomfortable. So change is meant to be uncomfortable. And uh, why I say this is because uh, everything's in the mind. It's just about how you see it. And uh, things are back to getting back to normal now. Though, uh, I mean, we can't say that uh, it's exactly back to normal. But uh, we have actually seen a lot of businesses in, uh, really suffer in this pandemic, but at the same time, there have been a lot of businesses which have been doing extremely well. And when I think of the word uh, resilient, the word resilient uh, reminds me of the fact that how this pandemic has taught us that how elastic, if I could use the word, we as human beings need to be and uh, it's very easy to say that uh, be positive and uh, you know look at the the glorious sides of things but i also understand utmost empathy for the fact that for people who are really going through it you know for people who've had to go through job losses or have suffered uh, massive uh, business uh, losses in this pandemic. But what resilience, that's where real test of human character comes in, in a way that when the, when the situation looks extremely bleak, when you may not see a hope at the end of the tunnel, what do you do then? How elastic can you be? And I think this time frame has a helped people to bring out that in themselves 
for those who have uh, adapted other people who may have figured out certain solutions or opportunities as uh, ritu mentioned earlier but for those who may not have adapted uh, and are looking at the situation in a more dismal way it may take some time but i feel uh, all of us humans you know they say that if you put people in an ocean they may not survive but they will definitely move their hands and they will try and swim right so for anybody who's lost their job at this time it's been a very very tough time for them and uh, that time uh, i wouldn't say that okay just get up and be positive and start looking for new things in your life all of a sudden uh resilience is a muscle which takes time to build it's just like anything else but people do survive people do survive a human basic instincts our brain is always going to uh, protect us and uh, you know eventually i just feel that after an extreme low the only way to go up is high as i mean how if you reach the rock bottom you'll only go up high only right and what else is your event team says it talks about agility uh that's something that i really believe in uh a quote that i heard many 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 years ago and it's like it's not the survival of the fittest or the fastest it's the survival of the person who's the most adaptive to change so i feel that this pandemic has given an opportunity to a lot of entrepreneurs who may or may not be doing so well just like our economy right our economy we all know is not doing great right now but when such situations happen is when people start innovating now the world as we know it i strongly believe post pandemic may not exactly be the same again in a very very small sense uh, we all learned how to work from home and a lot of people are saying that they are more productive or uh, the virtual meetings are great it saves people time it let it lets them follow their passion so this small change was only possible because people were put in such a situation where it could be made possible maybe a year ago uh, how many work from homes uh, were people getting perhaps uh, one or two in a month and that too you had to go to your uh, manager and literally yearn for it and be like can i please work from home but uh, i'm pretty sure that people are going to be very very open in the future to letting their uh, employees and their staff work from home now i'm not saying that the virtual is going to be the way forward but it is going to be a huge 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 part of the work uh, the way of working is what i'd like to say people where were social creatures right just to put us in a room and say that that's where we have to be and you know from home and you know just virtually interacting i don't think that's possible in entirety because we crave uh, those uh, brainstorming sessions we crave those lunches and all of that so all of that will gradually come back in however uh, i don't think that uh, entrepreneurs any longer are going to be uh, eyeing for those fancy infrastructure as they did earlier you know those huge glamorous buildings i think now people are moving into smaller spaces you know things like rotation and uh, working partly from home partly from office all of this has become a reality It could be as ever in imagine uh, so much happening and this was a very very basic shift now i also feel that uh, uh, as i said only those survive who will adapt so if in this time if as an entrepreneur your business is not thriving you're not alone a lot of people are in the same boat so all that you have to tell yourself is that but have you taken this time to look at things in a more futuristic way we do know that uh, i mean technology is nothing new if i say that technology and you know everybody is talking about the fact that how important it is to adapt technology and uh, 
you know understand how consumer behavior and markets and the tastes of people are going to shift eventually a uh, very very another very small example could we have imagined surviving without cinemas we're surviving pretty well let me tell you that there is a gazillion com- content on netflix prime hotstar people are really really happy with it and uh, barring a few cinema lovers and you know just for the sake of uh, having an outing i think our content needs per se are very satiated so could we have imagined something like that and i think that has brought the whole industry on its toes to figure out that what happens post pandemic world how are they innovating so it goes the same for every industry you know whether it's hospitality or uh, any 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 industry for that matter so this has been that golden time for you to align yourself to where the world is going to move ahead and uh, i really believe in the fact that it's going to be hybrid working first of all uh, i do believe that technology will of course as everybody says play a super huge role uh, across industries and i'm sure a lot of businesses who were offline would also be contemplating moving online so this golden period has given them a lot of time for that and as an individual basis or any kind or anybody who's a job seeker uh, we are are going to definitely see uh, a lot of uh, freelancers i mean it's really increasing i'm not very sure but i think india india does have about 1 to 2 crore people somewhere in the middle 1 and a half crore people who work as freelancers and i read this article really long back okay about 3 4 years back about the us which said that by some i don't remember the year 2025 something like that almost 50% of workforce in the united states of america is going to be freelance workers so i think the fact of uh, matter in america is that the side hustles are very very common there so that's been there and at that time i was like 50% freelancers that's a big took an overstatement i never believed in it but now that the times are changing i feel anything is uh, possible anything is possible i feel we're moving into a new world at this very moment i feel that uh, the world as we know it is definitely not going to be the same and i think uh, as far as anti uh, fragility is concerned i think it's beautiful to be fragile i think it's beautiful to be vulnerable because uh, if you've not been fragile if you've not tasted uh, failures if you've not been vulnerable how will you build that anti fragility at all so uh, i feel failures that's my personal belief i feel failures are the greatest lessons of our lives and uh, they should never be looked as setbacks if you have the perseverance and resilience that you're going to make something uh, wonderful out of it so i think your theme per se makes a lot of sense and i really hope that uh, i mean uh, I've, i've i've said what are my personal views about this whole situation and the business ecosystem and the economy and the employment sector is uh, but i'm pretty sure everybody will figure out their way somehow or the other if you are adaptive to change you will survive and you will thrive that's it from my side thank you so much tanya for your uh... wonderful uh, insight um, so a quick question to you we see that you have been quite an achiever in a very short span of time so what according to you is important in today's era agility or perfection uh, i think being an achiever is a uh, subjective <laughs> so i think everybody is an achiever in their own life yeah i don't think that any kind of uh, milestones or uh, designations or tags or anything uh, make you an achiever i think success is very personal i think uh, being an achiever is very personal um, but i'd like to call myself successful because in a very short span of time i have uh, developed i've learned a lot 
so that's one success for me in terms of my learning through my experiences and number two uh, at a very young age i've come to believe that uh, i can conquer anything that i want to do in my life and i view my life as a very infinite game i feel it's a very 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 long game i don't believe in milestones i don't believe in uh, you know being a certain someone at 18 25 35 or 40 i feel life if you look at things in a very holistic manner life's too long and coming to your second uh, part of the question is that do i believe in uh, perfection or agility agility uh the moment you put any other word in front of perfection for me i'm going to always choose that because i do not like the word perfection and i don't believe in it i don't think there is anything known as perfection i feel perfection is a myth what is perfection how do you know that at any given stage of time you've reached perfection you never reach perfection and if you feel you've reached to reach perfection which means you may have reached the epitome in your own head but uh, after uh, a, some span of time you'll eventually realize that you're stagnating because perfection is not a crown that's going to live on your head forever there are there are uh, crores of super talented people who are going to take over you like that so perfection is a myth anything yaar i mean even if i have to break it down into like a super 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 minute context okay uh, i love uh, creating good space for myself okay i'm a huge fan of i mean our passion and stuff cuz you know working from home i like to create a very healthy uh, space for myself and i'm always thinking about what, what what changes can i make to the interiors or what can i do but it's a never ending process after every 3 months i'm bored and i'm like okay what more can i do so there's never a stage when you're anyway satisfied so there's no point of uh, perfection the only reality is evolution if you believe in evolution if you know that you can keep evolving in life that's what's very 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 important even in terms of i think all entrepreneurs will also resonate with me is that when you start something you evolve super fast and i think that's the beauty of entrepreneurship i mean uh, people who are in their jobs are equally smart but i feel they uh, they're i mean in what really i feel distinguishes an entrepreneur from a person who's uh, working is the uh, the fact that uh, at an, when as an entrepreneur you learn a lot faster and you evolve a lot faster so perfection is a myth okay thank you so much tanya for your words of wisdom now comes the interaction part wherein we expect a good participation from all our webinar attendees i would now like to open the discussion for questions from the participants so all those who would like to ask questions please come forth one by one Anyone, guys, come on. We have. Hi, uh, this is Rohan. Uh, thank you very much, Kalpana, Ritu, and Tanya for those you know motivation and and inspiring inspiring words. You know, you've been entrepreneurs, and it, it's great hearing in this situation. It it really helps uh, us. So I would just uh, say, in is all of you three. You know, if you could just spare share, you know, this one instance professionally, maybe wherein you must have reached a near breakdown situation. uh it could be mentally professionally or you know when you felt hopeless at the moment and then then you've come out of that so we would really love to you know uh, hear from from each of you if you could share one situation that you could think of do you want me to start first sure yeah all right hi ron thank you so much for the question hi tanya hi ritu uh, such an uh, inspiring uh, thoughts what you have shared and i totally agree with you back very much you know real uh, perspectives it is well going on to about the challenges of life i would oh, want to say you um, as i i mean i i begin to survive cancer and this is the third time i'm fighting it so as i was uh, i i take up projects on retainership and while working on the retainership and i worked even during the lockdown very passionately and i gave them more than my 1000% but i don't know what happened and uh, the moment they you know the project was clicked 
they gave me a bahana of this covid and they sacked me out that's the time i decided uh, uh, am i audible yes yes you are okay so that's the time i decided i mean you know nothing i mean see you can uh, rob my ideas but you can't uh, take away my skills right so that's the moment i decided and uh, over I, i i couldn't sleep whole night i remember and uh, social tables was born so social tables is a platform where you know we invite world leaders who come over here they talk we have a leadership talk we have a knowledge series we have lot of you know other discussions on economic on political uh, issues on sdgs and uh, stuff like that so all i want to tell you is चैलेंजेस तो आएंगे लाइफ में सबके लाइफ में चैलेंजेस आते एज तानिया सेट परफेक्शन इज समथिंग है ही नहीं इट इज अ मिथ एंड आई टोटली अग्री विद इट हाउ हाउ कैन यू इवन बी परफेक्ट इन लाइफ सो दीज आर द चैलेंजेस व्हेन दे चैलेंज यू यू हैव टू बी वेरी रेजिलियंट एंड यू हैव टू गेट अप एंड फेस इट यू दे इज नो पॉइंट नो बडी इज गोइंग टू कम इन होल्ड यू no buddy is going to come and hold you i can just go tell my husband or call up my friend and tell them they will only sympathize or give you an empathy but at the end of the day it is you who decide so are you prepared to take those challenges are you prepared to get up are you prepared to you know face the new world now you can call new normal new world or whatever it is in fact this covid 19 have been such a blessing in disguise i never thought i mean and i'm like thank god jo hua acche ke liye hua because if that wouldn't have happened this wouldn't have happened right and today social tables is proudly associated with government of india on uh, october 15th is a form of president uh, abdul kalam ji's birthday and we are launching abdul kalam innovation series with government of india that's again a huge uh, uh, achievement for me so uh, you just have to follow your passion and yes maine kabhi ye nahi socha ki mera mujhe karm karna hai that's it i believe in karma and namah you 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 do your karm and never never think in return what you will get even if you don't get anything you are still getting a, a life lesson yeah so yeah that's it from my side i think never give up is the spirit yeah i mean i know sunna easy hai bolna easy hai karna bahut hi mushkil hai lekin uh, choice nahi hai aapke paas ab choice kya hai pick up yourself then why don't you pick up yourself that's it ritu Tanya absolutely awesome kalpra I, i don't think i can say anything too much that adds to that so i'll share a, a small incident that happened with me in my very early days of my startup um mm. the first one and a half two years we were bootstrapped as a business and i ran through all of my savings i had about 10 years or 12 years of corporate savings jitna bhi you know a, a corporate servant can save and, um, i put all of that into the business and i remember i didn't take a salary my co-founder didn't take a salary we used to pay our four tech people and our two health coaches money and uh, i remember lakhon mein unka salary ka bill jata tha aur wahi tha matlab sari savings usi pe jati thi and i remember this one month uh, when we were very very close to raising a term sheet but i didn't have money to pay salaries and i had no money in the bank left and i couldn't ask my parents because they're government servants i there was no there was no access to money and i was thinking i was like is mahine ka kaise katega term sheet aayegi fund raise aayega lekin is mahine ki salaries what do i go back and tell my employees ki tum apni family ko khana mat khilao kyunki mere paas paise nahi hai so i remember being through a lot of people and there was just no immediate money available and uh, i remember chatting in the night with another entrepreneur friend of mine and i'm like yaar i'm desperate i don't know what to do एंड ही सर थोड़ा लॉन्ग शॉट है लेकिन अहमदाबाद में कॉन्टेस्ट हो रहा है विच इज फॉर वुमेन ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स इट्स अ पिचिंग कॉन्सेप्ट वुड यू वुड यू गो एंड ट्राई फॉर दैट मे बी यूल विन ऐसे यार हजारों ऑन्टरप्रिनर्स आएंगे उसमें से मैं एक जीतूंगी और उसमें से मैं पैसे लेके सैलरी दूंगी थोड़ा लॉन्ग शॉट नहीं है ही सर तेरे पास और कोई ऑप्शन है क्या तो आई बोरोड आई रिमेंबर फाइव थाउजेंड बक्स फ्रॉम माई फ्रेंड and i booked a flight ticket to ahmedabad because the event was the next day and he knew somebody so he got me into the event 
and believe it or not there were close to about 400 entrepreneurs there from all over the country i pitched i won and they facilitated that check so that i came back home that week with the check and i paid salaries so sometimes it's it's about how desperate you are and what you will try when you are desperate but there is no option karna to hai because there are people depending on you it's not you it's the families of the people who you pay a salary to True. whether you have to beg borrow steal pitch whatever you have to do as an entrepreneur you have to do and we've all gone through it we've all gone through sitting up in the nights wondering ki yaar ye mar jayega to maine pichle 4 saal apne life ke waste kar di achhi khasi naukri chhod di family ki savings burn kar di puri family mere pe hans rahi hai dost bol rahe hain achhi naukri chhod ke yahan start up karne chali thi kya hoga and at that point of time like kalpana said karna hai ab piche to nahi ja sakte ab to aage hi jana hai so put your head down and keep walking and eventually you'll come out and i i think that you just have the covid is like that just keep your head down and you keep walking and eventually you'll come out of it over to you tanya very inspiring ritu that's a very uh, interesting thing you just said ritu you know i think uh, you just very casually said it but i think it is a very very deep connotation to it Uh, you know i don't think a lot of people understand ki karna to hai ka meaning kya hai mm. there's a lot of depth to what you said um uh, people don't think like that a lot of people don't think like that you know cuz the fact that uh, i think the only way to succeed is succeed is to dive in or execute if you've not really done that and if you don't really you know have a cushion to fall back on right i think yahi sabse bada challenge hai jo uh, men aur women mein bhi bahut farak uh, hota hai right kyunki men ki life mein to hamesha se karna to hai hi hota hi hai it's a by given it's given kyunki unko to karna to hai cuz you have to get married and you have to take care of the family to koi choice to hai hi nahi if you don't have a solid back balance from family to kuch to karna to hai you know बट अनफॉर्चुनेटली काफी वुमेन के साथ ये हो जाता है कि ट्राई कर लेते हैं यू नो तो वो करना तो है वो वाली बात तो आती ही नहीं है इट्स डजेंट कम वेरी नेचुरली टू अलॉट ऑफ पीपल कमिंग टू माई चैलेंजेस हाउ मेनी डू आई टेल यू यार सो मेनी दे हैपन एवरी एवरी टू मंथ्स ओके एंड आई डोंट नो आई फील अब माई मूड स्विंग्स आर ऑलवेज ऑन रोलर कोस्टर राइट तो सम आई एम टेलिंग यू लाइक वेरी ऑनेस्टली सम डेज आई फील ऑन टॉप ऑफ द वर्ल्ड i feel like you know i can do anything i want to and some days i feel so dejected and uh, so horrible that uh, everything seems uh, bleak cuz then you talk yourself into the fact right that uh, nothing good can happen now and then you can back to normal as well cuz i feel uh, the core of you always remains wo negativity positivity that battle in your head you know sort of two people fighting with each other often continues at many points i felt like giving up many points i felt like i remember uh, even uh, you know sometimes when you know uh, what happens is that you try something new but it may really not seem to be working out because uh, we need to understand that uh, success is not instant it takes time everybody has a back story anybody who tells you that they succeeded in one one and a half years is lying because they have had a lot of back story to that at least 5 years the what you see as the instant recipe of success that oh you know this person got funding in one one and a half years what have they done 5 years before that do you know that do we ask them that we just feel that they started how many failed startups have they run before that what have they learned in their corporate experience before that we don't ask these questions we just look at the headlines and feel like wow how did this person have it so easy and then when do we do it we feel like why is it not happening for us and then the whole impatience comes in uh all of this uh uh understanding and learnings to me have come over a span of the last couple of years this was not there 
I was a very immature uh, startup founder who knew nothing, who knew did not know ABC of startup when she just entered. I was a young girl with lots of dreams. That's all. That's all. And I had imagined that in one year, some magic is going to happen in my life. It didn't happen. I've had to really uh, build all of this over a span of time and work really hard. And I wouldn't even say that I've reached the epitome or any which way. There's so much more I have to do. In my life, I'm extremely proud of, uh, but uh, there's a lot, lot, lot more that I have to do not comparing myself to any other human being on this planet but just my own expectations of myself so my biggest challenge has been my uh, impatience and uh, my uh, mindset which i have really worked hard on thank you so much tanya um, any more questions from the audience Uh, uh, for Tanya, what are the mindsets in few words uh, that you have uh, developed while you are struggling or what while you evolving? What are the kind of mindsets I have developed? Great uh, question because I've never really thought about it and broken it down like that. So you have put me on a smart spot. But I'd say that in terms of uh, one of the strongest things that I've really learned is that uh, belief how important it is to believe in yourself and believe in what you're doing no matter what happens because if you really don't believe in yourself uh, then the con see this and then you know the whole confidence uh, is not going to emit because if what's within comes outside and it definitely shows so you really really have to uh, believe in yourself another thing that i have uh, uh, you know, really told myself is the fact that you have to persevere. And uh, I am not uh, somebody who is very hard on myself anymore, which I used to be. One bad day of work, two days, three days, and if let's say if a whole week has been unproductive, I was very hard on myself. I would often, uh, you know, just kind of self berate myself to, to be very honest. But then I realized that how important it is to be self-forgiving. Because when you look at things in a very infinite way, what is one week of your life? What is it? It's nothing. It's literally nothing. So you have to just keep moving forward and uh, persevere and be very, very self-forgiving if you're not so productive on certain days. Because... And there are also days when you kind of are like fast charged and you do get a lot more done. Sometimes you get more than a week's work done in just one day. So be believe in yourself. Remember that there is no shortcut. You have to persevere uh, and withstand all challenges. And please, please be self-forgiving. So these are some of the things that I could instantly really call. <laughs> Okay, thank you so much, Tanya. I think with this, we come to an end uh, of a very fruitful session. Thank you again to all the panelists who have agreed to join us and all our webinar attendees for joining in today. Thank you. You all will get to the the link for the webinar. Thank you for having us. Sure, sure. Let's the webinar. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye.